Thank you for joining us again on Praying Through the Psalms. And today we're going to take Psalm 23. And I know Psalm 23 is probably the best known psalm. It might even be the best known passage of scripture in the entire Bible. But it's so filled with comfort and strength and inspiration that we want to pray our way through it today. One of the things I wanted to point out before we even get into our worship time and prayer and going through the psalm, it's always good to try and find out what was going on at the time it was written. What is the background of this psalm? Well, many of the psalms, we don't know the background. And we don't know this one for sure. But one of the beliefs, and I, I believe this too, is that David wrote this psalm at a very, very difficult time in his life, a time of great upheaval. It might have been the worst time in his life. Many believe he wrote this psalm when he was fleeing from Absalom, who was trying to steal the kingdom from him. But Absalom was his very own son. And people believe this based on what we call internal evidence, things that are within the psalm itself. And I'll point those out as we go. But maybe you feel like you're going through a time of upheaval or a time of unrest. This is a great psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What a great thought to keep in mind as we're going through different kinds of things. Lorraine's going to introduce the psalm and then read it for us, and we'll begin with worship before we start praying our way through Psalm 23. So even if you know it by heart, listen along. If you don't, go ahead and look at your Bible, and let's learn this psalm together. Turn it into a prayer. Okay, uh, walking in faith gives us the opportunity to trust God to fulfill His Word, to trust in His character, and to believe what the Bible teaches. Following God is an exciting journey of faith. Did you get that? Following God is an exciting journey of faith. Expect that Jesus, your shepherd, Lorraine Shepherd, Mark Shepherd, Nicole Shepherd, will care for you. Rest knowing that he will refresh you walk with you, comfort you, nourish you, and He will protect you. So let's read the verses in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. worship together. psalm starts out, the Lord is my shepherd. Let's not take that for granted. Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw the multitudes in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, because he didn't just see them as a crowd of people. He didn't just see them like a pack of animals or a herd of cattle. No, he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. 
And he realized that as sheep without a shepherd, that meant they were unprotected, they were unguided. And isn't that the way people are living today? They're living like sheep without a shepherd, unprotected, unguided, unled, vulnerable to anything that comes along, lost and fainting. And aren't you glad that you found Jesus as your shepherd? Before we go any farther, why don't we stop for a moment and maybe your burden for somebody that doesn't know Jesus as their shepherd. They're, they're still in that lost state of, of just being tossed to and fro by anything that comes along, being vulnerable to anything that comes along. They don't have a shepherd in their life. Just pray for them right now. Just take a moment and pray. Maybe it's a son or a daughter or a grandchild or a spouse, whoever it is. Right now, just lift their name up to the Lord. Save, Lord Jesus. Draw them to Yourself. That they would know You as their shepherd. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, as we look at the Lord as our shepherd, I want to divide this up into two categories, and then there's some other, uh, other truths that we'll see in this. But as the Lord shepherds us, He gives us what is called constant care. And constant care is that care that we need every single day. And don't take that for granted. Oftentimes when things are going well, we, we forget that it's God that is giving us His constant care. And so we should thank Him and praise Him every day. Notice what He says about constant care. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He brings that satisfaction into our life. He meets all of our needs. But it says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Well, these are things that the sheep would need every single day, constantly. They would constantly be led and need to be led out to where there's green pastures. And so the Lord is the one who satisfies our need. I shall not want. What a beautiful declaration that is. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Well, what about my business? What about the economy? Wait a minute. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Paul talked about the great truth of learning contentment. That whether you abound or are abased, you can do all things through Christ. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. Psalm 107 says He satisfies and fills you with good things. Psalm 34 we learn that those who fear the Lord will lack no good thing, and those that seek the Lord will lack no good thing. Isaiah 58, 11, He will guide and satisfy your needs in a scorched land. Think of that. In a scorched land where everything is wiped out, He's still going to meet your needs. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Just thank Him right now today for your daily bread. Thank Him right now for your needs being met no matter what's going on in the economy. Lord, we pray for those who maybe they're worried about their business or their job. Lord, with all that's going on in the world, they're afraid they're going to lose their income or maybe already have. But I just pray right now, you'll draw near to them as their shepherd that they too can say, I shall not want. Why? Because He leads me. He leads me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down. Now that's an interesting phrase because we learn from shepherds that a sheep will not lay down until it is fully satisfied. If there's even a little bit of hunger in that sheep, they will not lie down until they are fully satisfied. And so where he says he makes me to lie down in green pastures, that's a picture of Him bringing you to that place where you have that which truly satisfies. What the world offers will never truly satisfy. But only Jesus can make you lie down in green pastures. The Bible says in Isaiah 30, verse 15, In quietness and rest is your strength. If you walk in the way, there will be rest for your souls. And so the Lord wants to give you His constant care today in the sense of a fulfilled life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He's got good things for you. He brings you beside the still waters. See, there can be a storm all around you, but inside you can have still waters. He'll restore your soul. Right now, some of you listening 
you need some restoration in your soul. Your soul's been beaten up a little bit. Or your soul's been malnourished. Or your soul's been under attack. But He'll restore your soul with His constant care. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. He satisfies. He leads me beside still water. I'm going to ask Lorraine to pray for us. For those that are needing guidance, this is a time of upheaval. And we need to be praying, Lord, will you guide me? I know if I just hear your voice and follow, I'll be all right. And you said you're my shepherd and your sheep hear your voice. So let's take a few moments and ask the Lord to open our ears that we might hear his voice. Lord, I pray for those that are uh, following along with us that are in need of guidance today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, open our hearts and our minds. Refresh us, Lord God. And remind us that you are our shepherd, that you care for us, that you feed us, that you're there for us, that you want us to lie down be beside still waters, God, that you want to water our soul, Lord, that you will guide us if we ask you. You will. And so, Lord, today, whatever it may be, whether you need guidance for emotional problems, if you need guidance for depression or anxiety or for a business decision or for ch raising your children or, or even just going to school, whatever it is, Lord, whatever it is, you can place it at Jesus' feet because he is your shepherd. He is. He knows you. He knows every hair on your head, whoever you are. All of us, each and every one of us, he formed in our mother's womb. He knows you. He knows you very intricately. So put your cares on him, for he cares for you. He is your shepherd, your good shepherd. Listen to his voice today that you might receive that answer, that guidance that you so desire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Amen. You, Jesus. Before we sing, listen to these words from Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 11. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. If one of the sheep were with young, they were about to have, you know, they're about to give birth, it would be hard for them to move around, wouldn't it? But he, he carries them. He carries those that need more help. Listen to those words again. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. The Lord will be as firm with you as he needs to be, but he will be as gentle with you as you need him to be. So just let the Lord guide you today. Let's worship the Lord as we, as we open up to his spirit working in our heart, guiding you, satisfying you as our shepherd.
Well, the Lord is our shepherd and he takes care of us in that constant care every day. But he also is our shepherd when we need crisis care. If David did write this at the time of Absalom's rebellion, again, I say if, then it would have been a time of crisis. And he would have fled the city of Jerusalem as the armies of Absalom was approaching. And he would have fled away through the Kidron Valley, the valleys around the city of Jerusalem. And he would have been at a time of great crisis in his life. But listen to these words. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I wonder if David thought that when he was going through that valley of Kidron. And, and it was dark and scary. And, and he was scared. And yet he said, I'm not going to be afraid. I will feel no, fear no evil. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I mean, death is all around me and I'm going through this. But wait a minute, I'm not going to fear evil. The Lord is my shepherd. Would you remind yourself of that right now? You might be going through something. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And here's the key, here's the secret to his fearing no evil. For thou art with me, for you're with me. Oh Jesus, I ask you right now to make your presence known to everyone that feels like they're in a valley. Lord, those that are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, maybe they've literally lost loved ones or friends to death. Maybe there's just a lot of fear right now in their life. They're going through the valley of the shadow of death. But Lord, I thank you. You're with them. So let them know your presence. Give them your crisis care in a time of crisis. Psalm 56 says this, and I, I love the way David said this. He said in Psalm 56, 3 and 4, even when I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? In other words, he said, when I am afraid. Well, doesn't that kind of admit there are times he wrestled with fear? He said, but when I find myself being afraid, I'm going to trust in you. And I'm going to put my praise in your word. Not in my emotions, but in your word. So if you're going through the valley of the shadow of death and you're wrestling with fear, put your trust in his word. Praise Him in His Word. Trust Him and know that He's with you. I'm with you, says the Lord. I'm with you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And, and what a great promise that is. You are with me. And then He says, Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now that's, a, if you're not a shepherd and don't know shepherding, that might be a little misleading. What do you mean the rod and staff? Let me give you the three things that that rod and staff were used for. The rod and staff of the shepherd was used, first of all, to correct the sheep. In other words, I'd give them a little knock on the side of the head if they were going the wrong direction. They'd get back in line. Yeah, they would. And sometimes the Lord needs to give me a little knock along the side of the head. And He sometimes uses the to help him. <laughs> Only kidding. But we do need that, don't we? So, but do you ever see God's correction as your comfort? Why? Because he's going to lead you into a better place and you'll avoid something worse. So correction and then inspection. The, the, the shepherd would literally put that rod down on the sheep, forcing the sheep to lay down so that the shepherd could then kind of pick through the wool to see if there were any cuts, bruises, any, anything in there that needed to be removed, any, any uh, living things that needed to be plucked out to inspect the sheep. They would go under the rod. And then we also see that he could use that rod as a weapon against predators. You know the Lord will fight for you. David, who wrote this, knew something about being a shepherd, didn't he? He so loved the sheep. When a bear came, when a lion came, he chased them down with his bare hands to go, go against that lion and the bear. And I want to tell you something today. There's a better shepherd than David, and that's Jesus. And anything attacking you, he's going to go after it. He's your shepherd. He's got a rod. He's got a staff. Sometimes that rod and staff corrects us. Sometimes that rod and staff inspects us so that we can be free. Sometimes his authority fights for us. So let his rod and staff comfort you today. You don't usually think of a hard rod and staff bringing comfort, but when you see how, how the shepherd uses it, it can be a great source of comfort. And then he says, uh, he says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. See if David's fleeing away and, and there's enemies all around him. He doesn't know who to trust. 
And yet God prepares a table for him. God provides for him. Even in that adversity, God's going to provide for you in your adversity. Psalm 37, 19, they will not be ashamed in the evil time. They will be satisfied in the days of famine. God says, when everything's falling apart around you, I'm going to be with you. Even when there is no food, I'm going to satisfy you. I'm going to prepare a table for you in the very presence of your enemies. And there's healing. There's healing. Thou anointest my head with oil. What does that mean? We usually think, well, that means ministry. You know, you're anointed. But in the shepherd sheep context, it means healing. Because when the shepherd would find little cuts about the face of the sheep, it was very easy for that sheep to be infected. And so he would find those wounds through the inspection and then put oil on them to heal them. And Jesus Christ inspects our heart so that he can heal us. And if you've been wounded or bruised or broken, he wants to heal you today. I believe in physical healing, but I know there's healings of the heart, healings of the spirit and mind as well. I'm going to ask Lorraine to lead us in prayer for healing. Not just physical healing, but the kind of healing that says, man, I, I've been hurt and, and I don't want this to turn into an infection. So Lord, pour your oil upon my wound. He anointeth my head with oil. And you know what that results in? My cup runs over. He wants to give you an abundant life. So Lorraine's going to pray. And, and let's just let the Lord do that, that inspection, that healing in our life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, I do pray for healing for each one listening to this message, Father. Lord, I just pray all those hurts or those pains or whatever it is, Father, that you will let your oil flow and that they will let your That's oil so flow in their life so that it can be healed. Yes. They will turn it over to the Good Shepherd. Yes. We thank you, Father God, that you do anoint us, Lord thank God, you. with your oil and your healing, that you will heal those memories, that you will heal those broken promises, that you would heal uh, those mistakes in life, Father, that we bring it to you and we leave it behind, Father. We thank you, Lord. Help us to move past and move on and that you have a rich and full life for us. And for physical healing, too, you are yes. able to touch physically yes. whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Any kind of pain, any kind of disease, you are able to heal right now, right where they are. You are able to touch. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Good Shepherd. Thank we you, thank you. You are there for every need that we have. In Jesus' name. Amen. Why does the Lord inspect you with his rod, hold you down so he can inspect you? So he can heal you. Why does he heal you? So that your cup can run over. If you had a broken cup, it couldn't be running over. It'd be leaking out. God wants to heal you so that your cup runs over. So that you not only have what you need, but you're, you're living an overflowing life so that even those around you are ministered to by what God's doing in you. Oh, what a beautiful truth. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. And now we close. Listen to this. He gives us a confidence for, a pre for the present and a hope for the future. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. David, you're fleeing away. You've lost everything. But he still believes in the goodness of the Lord and the mercy of the Lord, the hesed, the, the covenant love of God. He says, nothing can take that away from me. Absalom can steal my throne, but nothing can steal the goodness of God. Circumstances can drive me out of the city of Jerusalem that I love so much, but nothing can take me away from the covenant love of God. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. David wasn't thinking he's going to go under. David was thinking whatever happens, I've got the things of God. Goodness and mercy will follow me. All oh, the days of my life. And now hope for the future. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Can't take heaven away from me either. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So you should be a joyous, victorious person today, no matter what you're going through, because the Lord is your shepherd. You don't have to want. Look at all that he does for you. So we're going to close just by praising him in song. And just, if you don't know Jesus as your shepherd, come to him. And maybe even as we're singing his closing song, you know somebody that's wandered away. What is one thing the shepherd does when someone wanders away? He goes after the lost sheep. And Jesus wants to go after your backslidden child or loved one. So 
you take heart and you continue to pray. Maybe even during the song, pray. If you know somebody's slidden away from the Lord, there's sheep that has wandered away, he'll go after them. He's a good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Nicole, would you lead us in worship as we close? You prepare a table right before me In the presence of my enemies The arrow flies And the terror of night is at my door I'll trust you, Lord Amen.